About to get my first spotlight key. How should I use it? Save it for now or use it right away? Not really sure what it does. So spotlight keys essentially are a ticket to a loot box that has four things in it. There are three set cards and then a slot that has a random card in it. You definitely should be waiting to use your spotlight keys you could, until you could guarantee get cards that you're interested in. Myself and a lot of other content creators tend to post roundups of upcoming spotlights giving our thoughts on them. So taking a look at this video like this one where I talk about things releasing in May and June can give you an idea of which cards to be looking for that could be coming up for you. That you'd be interested in spending your resource on. Spotlight keys are definitely one of the more valuable resources in Snap, so you want to plan ahead a little bit when you're when you're using them. Yes, the random card is also guaranteed to be a higher series card. Super giant. Super giant means that we, uh. We can't Galactus for funsies, sad. Dino you know, won't trigger this, right? I believe that's right. She's lighting up like she will, only to be disappointed. It sounds like you're speaking a little bit from personal experience there. And I'm pretty sure the outcome here is even if I only play two cards, these mean that Thena won't trigger. Does anybody know? I'm actually going to spend, spend some cubes if I don't. I think Thena doesn't go regardless because of these, but I actually don't know offhand. Let's give this a try. You're pretty sure you'll serve really played here. Let's let's find out. This is a, a match. Good good place to learn that. You think she does? Let's let's learn together, shall we? The one point here doesn't matter. Watch this be Maximus, then the one point did matter. Ah, Taskmaster! That's not one that's usually in that deck. It's spicy. Fragmented Executioner, thank you for the 10 months. Welcome back. Appreciate it. What are some cards you consider underrated currently? I think in general, the Snap community tends to underrate cards that mitigate location variants. Snowguard, Quake, Legion. Those are those are always my top picks for things people should probably be playing more of than they are. Agent lost a point of power and fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. Yep. Quake was bad for a while. I mean, she was, but like, she's had her new text box for a long time now. Is Scarlet Witch the weakest of all the location changing cards? Yeah, I think so. It's an accurate statement. It sucks that I'm going to brick a draw here, but I think I definitely want to, uh, Play two cards for Athena with the Snow Guard. Oh, Rhino exists. When you're so terrible, people forget you exist at all. Ah, I wanted to play these next turns. Is Blue 
Blue Barball, the best balance card in stamp history. Always top tier, never any balance changes. Yeah, it's probably a good take. Iron Man. Iron Man's up there too. That's a good call. Game's rigged, chat. Game's, game's rigged. Oh, that's true. Blue Marvel was buffed during uh, the close beta. He was a 6-4 or 6-5 at one point. That's true. I forgot about that. We're super dead at Ronin and uh, Taskmaster, yeah. All systems go. This deck is very good against what we are doing. We are generating cards in our hand and they are master molding us on curve. Thankfully, they're not snapping us, so we got that going for us. Mindscape's generically good for us here. Our hand's also stellar this time through. We have Theta. Theta in the opener along with another grower. I feel like we really want Kitty plus like two of our three two drop gro growers to have an ideal hand. Isn't Kitty bad with Mindscape? No, Kitty comes back to your hand after Mindscape triggers. What's the best decks for goblins and a nihilist? There isn't really an established. Whoa! Rhino heard us talking shit, chat. Like, fuck you, Hogland. I am a playable card. There he is. Isn't she gorgeous, chat? Instant split. Tita and Quinjet down this turn, I think. I think I want Thena to trigger. I think three on Thena is better than one on Kitty and one on Collector, yeah? If you're missing Valentina on this deck, you should play Cable. Gives me plus eight here. 
and it gives them minus four. So I go to 20 and they go to, and they can't Taskmaster here. I guess if they're going to 18, I can play Ultron here and then I get plus seven here and then I'm 19 to 18. They can Mystique the left. Yeah, that's true. Mystique on the left gives them 10 there. Yeah, I'm going to lose to Mystique Max. Unlucky. I don't think I had the outs to beat that. I could have gone armor Ultron middle to get another plus four here. But then I would have been 23 to 22, and I would have been 13 to 22 over here, and this would have tied, so I also would have lost. There's no strings in this code, just spaghetti. Is it possible that it will change interactions like Yandu permanently destroying Deadpool? I don't think so. I think I wait on this Quinjet so I could go like Mirage into Quinjet Thena. Oh, snap. Because of the plan here. Ideally, we spike Angela or Collector next turn. Ah, waiting on that does give them a free free Hulk trigger. Actually, I think I Fina this turn. So that way, if we spike Collector or Angela, we can play her next turn. Yikes. Yikes, narrator. You could not. Oh, I hate all of the locations that add stuff to my hand so much, chat. They're so annoying. Or the matches tree today, they've been all right. Had a, had a good mix of opposing decks we played into. Not just the usual suspects. This is gonna give them cards, but they probably can't get extra points into here if I do this. So I think I think we do this. And give them the resources here. Also, it's two cards to trigger Theta. And then they're gonna max us back here afterwards. Yep, cool. I mean that. I think it's this, and then we can. Either play Valentina's card or Magneto plus Snow Guard on the last turn. Although I get, I guess, I guess not using all of my energy means that their Red Hulk gets bigger than thirteen. Yeah. They can't go left. Yeah, but they if they get a Rodin here, their Rodin will be real big, yeah? 
It's, it's close. The fact that they have red health means I lo if I lose this flip like we just did, it's bad for me. This is minus four for them and plus six for us and I'm dead, yeah? I don't know that playing Magneto won us this game, but it's sad that we're just dead now. If this, if this would have been a playable card, Red Hulk 17. I suppose... I suppose this ties Red Hulk left, yeah? So I'm 18 to 18, and then I'm plus six here up to 19. And then they're minus two to, this ties the game against Red Hulk. Okay, yeah, sure. We'll be 19 to 21 and 14 to 12. So we get a mulligan here. All right. I guess I guess we'll take a do over after that bad variance. Unlucky. If Valentina's card had just been a playable six drop, we would have crunched them. This hand's good. Quinjet into Collector into Coulson is a solid curve. Would Armor have been a better play than Sentinel? Armor costs two, Sentinel costs one because I had Quinjet. Couldn't play Magneto in Armor. more of these that I want. I think the answer is not a lot. So board space is going to be tight this game. I kind of I hope the door dimension gets blown up. Yeah, oh, Red Hulk is so demoralizing. Hand is so bad, they're leaving. Good beat. We take those, as we say in the biz. Ah, I wanted to play that one. I think I need to play both of these here. This is so, I mean, they just frowny face, but this is like generically really good for their deck, yeah? My kitty, don't bear in my kitty. Why, bro? Why? She was so young. She was so young.
Yeah? Yeah, yeah. This is beating Red Hulk thanks, thanks to Goose. Yeah, I want to make sure whatever they play on the lab doesn't double. Needed the bird, chat! Needed the bird! The frowny face on the peak was in fact confirmed to be bait. Was in fact confirmed to be bait. The bird was the word. Squanch! Honestly, Squanch is a kind of decent card to get from Valentina. It's gonna be like a 1-7 very consistently once it gets a 2 discount, yeah? Like this card. This card being a 4-7 with this text box is quite good. Yeah, and not, not only that, but like, we squeaked this out against a matchup that's tough for us, right? Like, our deck keeps its hand full and they have rooted a Taskmaster and stuff. Snowguard. Snowguard is lovely, yeah. You know what else is lovely, chat? These adverts. We'll see you in 120 seconds. We're going to play some more of this when we get back. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. Subscribers, I'm going to run upstairs and grab my lunch really quick. BRB. I think the Snow Guard redesign is easily the most elegant change they've ever made. The card occupies the same design space, but is so much more application. I agree. It's lovely. Woo! You know what else is lovely, chat? Valentina boosters. We need gold on her. Animated. Run something with Null since we got the gold yesterday. Rad. That'll be our next deck. I think we'll do null negative. I've been meaning, I've been meaning to revisit that. It'll be a good excuse to play some null. Wouldn't the lab have double taskmaster to 10, but then set the power to 13? No, white space. Shuri's lab double, Shuri's lab has a different timing window for how it doubles than Shuri does. Shuri doubles before a card effects happen. Shuri's lab doubles after all effects have happened. Three Smith, thank you for the five years and for the very generous tier two. Appreciate the 60 months, welcome back. Definitely want to play Angela on two. 
in case we draw Thino or Collector next turn. Yeah, I'd be down to play some of the Black Knight deck scissor. I'm solid and fun. Make it so. Thanks for the biddies. AM. For the 14 months. Welcome back. Luke Cage has plenty of sweaters for the Oak Nine, so. Oh, you know what? I should have. Uh, I should have goosed left this turn. Because they have turn four Professor X, because that's how this metagame works. I do this, I think. Center here. I think I do this to kind of place for all three. I can definitely lose this. card seems a lot less good when there's not a Professor X in play. GG's Ohio. Good luck with the rest of your kind question today. That was a tough matchup. Your neck, your neck seems well positioned against what we're doing. Whenever I hear people talking about Cannonball being problematic, I always sigh a little bit. Because while there's certainly a chance that he might need an adjustment, I definitely think we need an adjustment to Professor X before we consider touching any of the cards surrounding him. Honestly, I kind of don't need to draw any more cards from my deck, right? Do I just like Snowguard here? Yeah, maybe it's this. 
I guess I kind of want to draw armor or goose for the back straight leg. Will be a good adjustment to Professor X. Jettison him into the sun. Might not be able to play around Cannonball this game because of the Baxter building. Dolson made Kitty left. I think it's pretty unlikely that they put nothing on the left.
Thanks for the Professor X, bud. Appreciate you. Victory. Yeah, I thought I was crazy when I played the Destroyer. Little did you know I was crazy like a fox. How'd you know the Professor X was coming down on the game of land? Well, it's their best possible play. And if you're unlucky like me, you could know your opponent is always going to be able to make their best possible play. Dracula in the middle because that's their Professor X path that they have one I assume. he never misses yes also don't call him Shirley yeah their last card is kitty pride for people talking about the opponent's deck <laughs> they're all in so we're staying maybe I'm just supposed to assume they punt they punt here oh yeah okay that makes sense yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Because he's the highest power here, so he gets punted that up. Sure, sure. Wouldn't have hit anyways. It's fine. It's fine. We got three more shots here. I get Nocturne plus Professor X down the left here. Oh, 
Oh, I don't have priority anymore, so I can't bear this profitably. Sad. I think we do this because it makes Mockingbird cost you next turn. Fine, chat. It's all part of my big brain plan for them to not know how many points I have here. I think I need to play for all three. I lost three points of power here. I would have had Namor over here instead of this if Mockingbird would have cost one less. So if I lose, if I lose by by three or less over here, it's my fault. And we might. I don't know. I forget how big this is. Now we're good. Here. So my my miss sequencing there on turn five would have gotten me Namor over here. Victory. That felt pretty competitive, yeah. The uh, go goose and armor doing exactly what I wanted them to do in that matchup, making it so Cannonball and Professor X were awkward for them. Having two cheap ways to navigate around the ball. Is Maria Hell or Scarlet Witch a better replacement for Sogar? Do you have Nocturne? If you don't have Nocturne, I would probably play uh, Scarlet Witch. Well, maybe it is just Maria Hell. I would play Nocturne first if you have her. If you're still missing her, probably Maria Hill. So uh, unfortunately, Snow Guard and Nocturne are the only cards in that slot that can let you get into locations like Crimson Cosmos and Sanctum Sanctorum are the two things that they do. Fill a, fill a unique, unique role in that. Invisible Women tends to be profitable unless they're like C3. I'd be very surprised if this deck wasn't fairly reasonable. It's playing a bunch of very good Marvel Snap cards. They are, they are in fact playing Cerebro 3, by the way. Odin Valentine. I actually can't because of the big house and them getting rid of Limbo, which is sad. Valentina looks weird without gold. Lunatech. Thank you for the minis. We'll roll her some upgrades after this. 
Get five or six splits into her. Happy to spit a few more. Unfortunate we didn't roll, um... We didn't roll Stogard here to stop their limbo. I know play rate skyrocketing today. It is kind of, isn't it? We're going to Oda, Odin the Valentina. And then we'll AJ Cole said that we'll get a draw next turn here still as well. And this Odin is the full eight power thanks to Lucas on the right here. Yeah, I'm supposed to move Collector out so I'm going to have eight stats here probably. Actually, here's an interesting thought. I don't really want to draw any of the cards in my deck, right? None of them are super useful next turn. I guess Snow Guard could make Collector bigger. I could Odin the Agent Coulson to get two fours. Is a real a real question here. I I think I like the upside of getting an extra four. Especially an extra four that costs three, yeah. It's definitely the cooler play, accurate. Are ye worthy? Are ye worthy? Hey Chad, are three twelves good? What do you think? Unclear, yep. I think it's this. I think it's this. Oh wow, they didn't play right at all. Maybe I'm supposed to play Hulk on the left. What's Cerebro? We're good, yeah? Freaking got him. Victory. I like this deck a lot, chat. It's doing all, it's doing all the types of things I enjoy doing in Marvel Snap. Yes, you should definitely spend one spotlight key to guarantee Thena. Thena is very good. I'm going to wait on Quinjet because I want to play two drop into Thena one drop. I only have two other one drops in my deck, so not a high likelihood of landing one. I shall call this deck Loki is lame. He is. Loki's a nerd and you shouldn't play him. Is armor a tech card here? Yeah, armor helps you not get cannonballed. Armor. Armor and Goose are your anti-cannonball cards.
that's potentially a very good one, huh? out to grab priority going into the last turn this this build of the deck that our opponent is playing is incredibly greedy and has a really hard time in games where it doesn't get seven turns data thank you for the 16 months appreciate that welcome back do you trigger hotel inferno if you bear you cannot well that's a I don't know what they played, but looks like we guessed the echo location correctly, so we should be good to go. Guys, gals, the non-binary pals, we got them! Boop them. Boop them on the nose. The old snoot boop. We're actually winning, even if... We were actually casseroling them even if that worked, yeah? They were plus two, plus four, plus two. But it still feels good to give them the snoop boop. I think with limited space, I vibe on playing the Quinjet out right away. Or Killmonger deck anyways. Lovely. Again, Snow Guard or Nocturne is important in this slot because they are the cards in the game you can play that lets you into places like Sanctum, which is important in a deck like this. You really need to be able to play to all three locations. Uh, I'm gonna do this, and then we will disable by Frost next turn, I think is the plan. Is there a good replacement for Valentina? You could kind of play Cable, I guess, but I, I will say that some of the power output range that this deck is aiming to have with some consistency is definitely dependent on... is definitely dependent on uh, Valentina. So I'm not, I'm not gonna say the deck's unplayable, but you will struggle to get numbers in games when you're missing her. Cable. Cable can give you a number some of the time, at least. This does mean I won't have the option to disable Limbo, though, which is potentially favorable for them. On, Lucy. No longer unlukey. Very lukey, in fact. 
Hey Jeff, I used to follow you in Magic. I just got into Snap. Any recommendations for budget decks? So, one of the things that's good, bad, awkward about Marvel Snap is that budget decks don't really exist in this game because the only card people who are free to play don't have access to is the latest season pass card. So like, by not spending money, you have all of the same things that people who spend money have access to. I'm gonna goose the center so they can't Valk their magic, I think is the plan. I don't care if they Valk me here because I'm gonna have Lucas for next turn. Everybody, everybody's, uh, yeah, Shang could be their last card, so they're good reason to goose the center. Oh, oh, if they're a Shang deck, do I want to armor this turn? Yeah, probably. It's a good shout. Um, they're playing all the other tech cards. Shang is definitely possible. Shang or Valk is their last card. It's probably Valk, but we'll play around Shang just in case. I'm only going to be able to also get to I only can trigger her one more time this game anyway, so might as well be next turn. Um... Luke or Valk, yeah, it's true. I don't know, I think this is just like mostly a free roll. You're, you're right looking at the deck list, I think Shang is unlikely, but I'm also not like losing anything really by playing it out here. Coulson is our best top deck. Yes, because Coulson will not only give us the most points, but he'll put points into the collector map. We're at a pretty favorable spot here, I think. They're gonna Valk Grandmaster Valk. That's adorable. Oh, doesn't win the game, but it's adorable. So I was talking about armor earlier too. Not only is this an anti-cannonball card, but between Luke and armor, it also means that our opponents just can't interface with our big Thenas and Angelas. I put, I put this deck, so I streamed Marvel Snap for over 10 hours yesterday. And naturally after I signed off and like walked around the house a little bit, I sat down and I did more Marvel Snap stuff. So this this deck list came to me in a fever dream. And uh, it play it played out basically exactly how how we drew it up. I love I love this style of deck. And this this style of deck has felt like it really needed one more good source of numbers. To like make or break it and Thena being that another good source of numbers feels good so you have Angela Thena collector and Valentina and kitty to a degree that all all help you play cleanly and then goose armor and Luke do a mix of being interaction slash anti-interaction snowguard snowguard to her uh her hawk is so good at getting you into Crimson Cosmos and Sanctum Sanctorum and turning off Limbo. I like this. I like this build a lot. Yeah, we had a cheer for a Valentina spell. Let's see if we can end this set on uh Does the artist name's Valentina? It must be, yeah. Let's see if, let's see if we can take uh end on a end on a golden Valentina, huh? How does Arbor help against Cannonball? Cannonball is only good when he's destroying the card he's hitting. So if you have armor in the path where they Cannonball, he doesn't do anything if the rest of the locations are full. She's so pretty, chat! I think, I think Luatek has taken the title of luckiest whale splits.
There's a purple neon discount border. Look at chat. Look, look how cheap it is to make my card fucking hideous. Look at, look at how absolute of a deal it is to make my card look awful. Nope, not even once.